Hello and welcome to Redeeming Thunder. My name is Erica and the Lord has me on a um, assignment to give you prophetic word regarding my cup overfloweth. And this um, vision came to me on 1-15-2023 and I was... Um, hearing the Lord many other days um, to get into the secret place. There had been a lot of stresses and stuff, healing from illness and feeling overwhelmed and um, just um, low energy. But now I feel a whole lot better. Thank you, Jesus. Um, I recommend that everyone begin to take some turmeric, black seed, also oregano oil. Um, those are the key, the key um, herbs. Also, to help with um, you have nerve pain. <sighs> Let's say uh, if you do. Um, vitamin B12, magnesium, and try to find the one that says magnesium um, complex. And there was another one, lysine and, oh, arnica. It's a homeopathic tablet, goes underneath your tongue, and it works very great. And just... Um, Focusing on, oh, and um, the fish oil. I forgot what it was called, but, oh, and vitamin D. If you can up on those vitamins in this hour to poo, to um, strengthen your immune system. On top of, I feel I need to, you know, alarm Sound the alarm on this to protect your family, anoint your house, anoint your and um, anoint your children and yourself. That is crucial in this time. Um, always pray for a hedge of protection of thorns and of fire. Um, because there are some harsh times coming and we we his his people are going to be protected from these storms and from these calamities and there's going to be a, a lot of shaking going on and one could feel a bit stressed just watching it all or wanting to cave and she began to get worried or stressed and we're not going to cave and we are going to be in um, consecration and prayer and um, we need to ascend into meeting Jesus and I'm saying that because of the vision I received okay so this is how it goes um, I was worshiping the Lord while I was cooking, so just singing a song, and then I saw, suddenly I saw in the spirit, a huge Jesus coming from the sky. He, it was a white outline of him, and all around him it looked like, um, just soft colors neon colors kind of like an aurora um uh and then it he his arms were st stretched out open like in a very welcoming manner and um under him so right in center of his um the chest air, stomach area there was a celestial castle floating, like a really huge one, 
floating in the heavens and in the galaxy. And then the colors around Jesus were a light colored blues, purples, neon light. And there were some twinkling stars. And the castle was so bright white. And it was illuminating this light from inside the the palace. And then the um there was bright light illuminating from out the outside of the palace. And it was made of gold and crystal cathedral architecture. And it was very beautiful celestial glory. In that moment when I was seeing that, I felt the Holy Spirit very strong and I was receiving goosebumps while I was praying and receiving that vision. And I drew a picture. It's not really good because I did it really quickly and so that I wouldn't forget. I don't know if you could see it. But you could see the castle inside. Okay. Ouch. Okay, so then... Today, I happened to um, just type in, oh, researching Revelation today, typing in the chapters, and I realized that um, this kind of relates to this vision. So I'm calling this video Ascend to the Lord's Palace Vision. Okay, so... Revelations 4, 1. I don't know what that first word says, but okay. This I looked and behold, a door was opened in heaven. And the first voice when I heard was as it were a trumpet talking with me, which said, come up here. And I will show you things which must be here, hereafter. So then this corresponds to Ezekiel's vision. And it references Matthew 3.16, Acts 7.56 and 10.11. And so the heavens divide and this door stands open the way. This is the Ellicott commentary. The way into the presence of God lies open. All who have faith may enter to reach the heavens. heavenly viewpoint. Hebrews 10, 11, 10 through 20. It also references Psalms 46, 5. And that says pulpits commentary. God is in the midst of her. She shall not be moved. Okay, so I'm going to read the verse first. God is in the midst of her. She shall not be moved. God shall help her in that right early. So the pulpits. Where are you? While the world is being turned upside down. The church is unmoved since God is in the midst of her. God shall help her and that right early, literally at the turning of the morning or in other words, at the break of day. So references Psalms 36, Psalms 49, 14, Isaiah 17, 14. I'll read those in a minute. The deliverance of Israel from Sennacherib. Chirib, Sennacherib, came. It is to be remembered when it was discovered early in the morning that in the camp of the Syrians were 185,000 dead corpses. So their enemies were gone, were done, were dead. In their sleep, one angel took out on 185,000. This is giving a hint of what there's an angel of death roaming around. Okay. We need to pray Psalms 91. But this more so is for the wicked. Um, 
In other words, the Lord is warning that he needs us to ascend higher and meet meet him meet him up in the third heaven where he's at because a lot of things are going to hit the fan and we cannot be moved we have emotions we we're human we have but we can't we're uh, we live on this world, but we're not of this world. So we need to be able to react in a very um, protecting our hearts and our minds type of manner. And the only way that we can get to that level is that we're not doing the protecting. The Lord is keeping us on our mind protected insan and we're in sanity and we're living in peace. We need to pray for a certain level of peace. Shalom more so. It's a deeper level of peace than the regular word peace. Now when it was talking, we need to, and that's why I think I had that vision. Because the Lord was trying to show me how beautiful it is. It looked like a Disneyland castle, but obviously a thousand times better. It just was in that moment, like feeling the Lord's glory, feeling at peace, feeling safe, feeling um, just um, in awe. It was kind of almost feeling, what am I doing, taking so much time, you know, energy, worrying about silly stuff first world problems here when if he's telling us to ascend and meet us in this palace in his he's going to show us more visions and dreams and and give us tools so that we can try be triumphant in this next stage, in this year, 2024, going in. It's because we need it. It's because it's needed to survive. No more being able to survive with that, with, without it, without him being center focused. Now, the voice of trumpet, it references Revelations 1.10. On the Lord's day, I was in the spirit and I heard behind me a loud voice like a trumpet. Now, I've heard that trumpet voice before. The first time was in maybe late July, early August, 2023. And I heard it like it through the window. So it was like outside. And it said, we are many. But it sounded like not a voice. It sounded like it was spoken with an instrument. And I was able to understand through the notes of the instrument But it also sounded like from very far away. So um, but it sounded like many at the same time. Okay. So that startled me a little bit because I, you know, I've never heard that voice before in my entire life. And then another time I heard, I heard it. Saboeth. Sab so I heard Saboeth is here. Saboeth is here. And it sounded like trumpets. Now, Jehovah Saboeth. 
I may not be saying that right, but just bear with me, is one of God's names in the Bible. It occurs more than 270 times in the Old Testament. It combines God's personal name, Jehovah, Yahweh, with the Hebrew word Sabaoth, meaning host or multitude. <coughs> so Jehovah Sabaoth means The Lord of Hosts. Sabroths. Maybe that's how you say it. Okay, so Sabroths often has, because I heard Sabroths. Um, military connotation, such as a group of fighting men or an army. 1 Samuel 17.45, Isaiah 13.4. Sometimes Sabroth refers to host of heaven, Psalms 148.2, 1 Kings 22.19, picturing God as Lord of the multitudes of angels, which are numbered as a thousands, thousands, and ten thousands times ten thousand, Daniel 7.10. Sabroth also is used to describe the innumerable stars in the sky. Psalms 33, 6, and 103, 20, and 21. This says, The important thing about this name for God is that whether it is armies, angels, or stars, Jehovah, Sabroth, the Lord of hosts, rules over all things, both on heaven and in earth. And... I wanted to open up Acts 7, 56. So 7, 56 says, Look, he said, I see heaven open and the Son of Man standing at the right hand of God. And then it says, Um, again, Acts 10, 11, and saw heaven opened and a certain vessel descending unto him as it had been a great sheet knit at the four corners and let down to the earth. Hmm. <clears throat> 